going to stain on this side about two stops under. When a new film stock is introduced, we as cinematographers try to see what the boundaries are of it and uh, if there's anything that we are giving up to gain another aspect of it. And one of the methods of doing that is taking the variables out, whether we're finishing digital or photochemically. The way to take the variables out of that would be printing the original camera negative directly to a print stock and analyzing that. Here is 5219 as a direct print. If you look at the grassy area, which is three to four stops overexposed, you can see more information and color definition going through that area. We set up this shot so as we dolly around the exposure, it doesn't change at all. Also, we're looking at the shadow detail compared to the 5218. Here, the grassy area and the barn in the background sort of melt into one tonality. If you look at the pitchfork area on the left side of frame, it doesn't hold the same kind of color depth as the 5219 does. Back to the 5219, notice the similarities in the boxer's flesh tone. There's a smoother overall texture, which is a testament to the lower shadow grain of the stock. So while the new stock is consistent with 5218, you can see the advantages in the highlight detail and underexposure performance. This is 5219 and a test to see what mixed skin tones would look like without doing any special lighting on either one of them. If you keep your eye on the darker skin of the female boxer, you'll notice that the 19 reproduces a more pleasing flesh tone. Here in 5218, she doesn't have as much of the saturation as the 19, although it's still a great looking image. Back to the 19, we can see how the skin tones are really in balance with each other. There is more saturation in a cleaner way without affecting the overall image. Now we have 5219 one stop underexposed but developed normally. This is a test to see how the grain of the film responds in lower light areas, then print it up to look normal. 5218 has a little bit more milkiness going on in the blacks. The boxer's chest has less color saturation and the actors just don't pop out from the background as much. As we go back to the 19, you can see the colors are vibrant and the different tonalities in the boxer's chest have more depth. Also, there's a noticeably smoother texture visible on the floor. Hi, I'm Mike Soa. I'm one of the DI colorists at Laser Pacific. For the purpose of this comparison, I balanced the 5219 and the 5218 together to have the same brightness level only. So it had the same black level and the same brightness level, and I didn't do any secondary or any power windowing within this. We felt would keep it as fair as possible. That way we could see what was going on within the negative. This shot in particular, we started out with a somewhat normal filmic look, but we wanted to see what would happen when we pushed it into a commercial so music video look, really pushing the contrast. We wanted to see what would happen to the grain. And in particular, one thing we noticed was the highlights in the 5218 didn't hold the same kind of detail as the 5219. In this shot, the same holds true for the highlight and low light color rendition. It's more noticeable in the boxer's flesh. The saturation of the flesh was not touched, that's just naturally what is in the negative. And it definitely comes through a little bit stronger and nicer. This shot here demonstrates the predictability of the 5218 and how close the 5219 is, yet there is this pleasing uh, little flesh tone additive that comes out on the 5219 that's more apparent on the black boxer than the white trainer. The white trainer's flesh tone comes through fairly normal, yet I get a better saturated color on the boxer.
this demo shoot has been more intense than I thought it was going to be. Today's feature post-production and also television post-production, we end up finishing our projects digitally. Using this film in a digital intermediate post-production process, we wanted to take a look and see what advantages it might give us. Like we noticed in the direct print comparison, you can see more color depth in the grass. Also, the bright sunlight on the barn floor doesn't feel compressed and yellow like in the 5218. You can see the brightness range that the stock can hold without any dynamic adjustments to the shot. Here we've applied a window to the exterior, and you can see that the grass has less noise and captures the tonality better in the 19. This is a great example of the extended latitude of this new stock. Again, using only primary color controls in this night exterior scene, we see how closely the 19 responds like the 18. The neutral color renditions are really similar between the two stocks. As we go back to the 19, the difference here is that we get a little more color saturation in the skin tone without contaminating the entire image. In this scene, the 5219 has a smoother texture, especially in the shadows, because of the finer grain. You can also see greater luminance in the reds and more variations of color in the boxer's skin tone. Here we have 5219 rated at 1000 push one stop versus 5218 normally exposed. One thing to notice are the smooth neutral blacks in the 5219. I don't feel like I'm giving up much with the push one except for a slight increase in the grain. Now we have both stocks pushed one stop. You can see the 19 maintains better color rendition and saturation than the 18. Also the 19 has noticeably less grain in the floor and the boxer's body. Finally, we look at both stocks underexposed by two stops. As we zoom in and take a really good look at the grain structure, you can see the 5219 is much smoother. The color rendition is continuous and vibrant, whereas the 18 flattens out. I think you can see the improvements in grain and color fidelity are obvious. The reduced noise in the shadow regions is a huge plus in moody situations. Here, digital post-production techniques can be used without the risk of degrading the image. For me, the capability of the 5219 and extreme exposures makes it specifically appealing for finishing a project through a digital intermediate. As a colorist, my job is to try to build a good contrast level, yet keep the detail in the lowlights. I find that the 5219 stock was designed so that I can have that contrast and the detail as well without having to do anything extra like power windows to pull the detail out. 